Good day. God bless you. It has been one of the most difficult weeks, uh, one of the most difficult seasons, one of the most difficult quarters uh, that we've seen in a long time. Uh, greetings. I'm Pastor Johnny Gentry, Free Indeed Church. So glad you've joined us today. Uh, like me, many of you are probably mentally exhausted. You're probably uh, having a run of emotions, uh, thoughts, uh, feelings. Um, some of you have cried. Some of you have um, cursed. Some of you have expressed anger, different kinds of emotions, because it's been a tough week uh, and a tough time in our nation. But I, I, I come by this morning to give you some good news. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Second Corinthians 5 and 19. Does anybody sense that amidst all that's going on, that God is reconciling the world unto himself? But get this. The scripture says he has not imputed our trespasses against us. In other words, he has not counted our sins against us. That's going to make some people angry because some people want to hold the sins of a few against them for their entire life. But I got good news. God is not counting your sins against you. But the scripture goes on to say, but he has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. He has entrusted to us the message of reconciliation. Do I have any live stream listeners out there who can lift your hands and say, I receive the calling, the commission and the commitment to reconciliation? What does reconciliation mean? It means that just like God didn't hold your mess against you, you can't hold others mess against them. That means that forgiveness, healing and reconciliation should be the aroma that is that is fuming from true Christ followers. I'm so glad you joined us today. I believe God wants to say some things to us about this time in our nation. How many of you know that the word of God is speaking prophetically to us? The spirit of God is speaking prophetically to us. And he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the churches. I'm not looking for the right response from Donald Trump. I, I, I wish there was one, but I ain't dependent on that. I, I, listen, I ain't looking for the right response from law enforcement. I hope that they will respond to the crises in our nation with law enforcement reform, with federal uh, good sense laws for policing and police brutality and body cam uh, footage release and all that. I hope that they respond. I'm not even looking for the right response from the black community. But what I am looking for, I'm looking for the right response from the body of Christ. We who hold the keys and the answer to if a man dies, will he live again? I need somebody to pray with me right there. See, we have the Bible says that we have the keys to the kingdom. We have the mysteries of the faith. And in times of crises and conflict, it is the church, the black church, the brown church, the Asian church, the white church that we must have the answer. The scriptures teach us always have an answer and be ready to contend for this faith with which we believe. I'm telling you, um, when the white folks kneeled down to the black folks in Third Ward, Houston, this past Sunday, and when uh, we positioned ourselves on the very basketball court that George Floyd grew up on in CUNY Homes Projects, Third Ward, and the white folks and the black folks came together to pray, 
We had no plan. We had no concoction, no scheme, no premeditation on what would happen. But Trey Nine, my brother, Bobby Harry, Eyes on Me, Inc., Johnny Gentry, Free Indeed Church, Community Work CDC, all the pastors from white churches, pastors from black churches, urban missionaries, lay people, believers, came together on the basketball court in Third Ward and the white folks kneeled down and said, we just want to repent for generations of systematic racism exacted against the black community. And the black community, we weeped and cried because we saw sincerity and we saw a God moment for reconciliation and healing. Y'all can stay mad and burn and loot if you want to. That is the work of the devil. I said it. You burning up the city, you breaking out windows, you cursing the white man, calling him the devil. Makes me wonder who's the real devil. That is not of God. As the body of Christ, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. Nothing wrong. Listen, we got a right to be angry about some stuff. But the word of God says, be angry, but sin not. You going to obey the word or you going to obey your flesh? What you going to do? Here we are. It's happened. Hate that it happened. We despise this time in our nation. We listen, we're making history right now for some of the most egregious, diabolical, demonic, racist acts, policies, systematic oppression in the history of our country. You would think that we just went back to the future. But it happened. What are we going to do as the church? Racism, systematic oppression, economic oppression is here. What are we going to do? As the body of Christ, I'm talking to the church, what are we going to do? For God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. He did not count my trespasses against me. So what right do I have to hold a grudge against a brother or a sister of the same color? of another color. Can I give you this revelation real quick? Some of you, before you even think about reconciling with the white people, with the white, you need to reconcile with your kinfolk. You need to reconcile with your cousin. You need to reconcile with our own community before we can heal cross-racially. Ooh, I didn't get no likes and no compassionate hugs and no hearts on that one. I'm going to say it again. Some of us just need to reconcile with ourselves. We need to reconcile within our own family. I release an anointing right now and faith right now and a revelation right now that, that somebody listening will get, will get inspired. That I, I don't just need to make it right with other communities. I need to make it right within my family, with my husband. I need to make it right with my, with my wife, with my children's father, with my children's mother. I need to make it right with my auntie. I need to make it right with my uncle. I need to make it right with my grandkids. I, I, I release an anointing for reconciliation across the nation right now. According to 2 Corinthians 5 and 19, I wish somebody would lift your hands with me and just say reconciliation be released in my atmosphere. Healing and reconciliation be released in my atmosphere. I release right now by faith. I speak it into the atmosphere that we have the authority as Christ followers, as disciples of God. Come on. As 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 ministers of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. I release an anointing for reconciliation. I wish everybody in live stream land right now would by faith just begin to type reconciliation, healing now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you release reconciliation in your atmosphere and in your environment, your family going to be all right. Your neighborhood going to be all right. I can't get nobody to pray with me. If you just release forgiveness, just like he forgave you, just like when you cheated, 
when you lied on your income taxes, when you betrayed a spouse, when you did something in your flesh that you shouldn't have done, when you were addicted to pills, when you cursed and put your mouth on people, when you were caught up in your own trespasses, the word of God says God was in Christ. I'm so glad that he was. Reconciling the world unto himself. And he did not count J.G.'s trespasses against him. But watch this. I need you to get this and we're going to move on with five points. He didn't count my mess against me back in the 80s when I was selling crack and smoking primos and robbing blue collar crime, white collar crime in the mid 90s in my addiction when I was running up in convenience stores with pistols. When I was hurting people in southwest Houston behind some foolishness, he didn't count that against me. He didn't count my spiritual daughter, Aisha Lust. He didn't count her mess against her when she was banging in and, 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 and in a lesbian lifestyle and, and using drugs and selling drugs and hurting people and cutting people. He didn't count our sins against us. I need those of you who are stuck on anger with the white man. I need those of you who, who have issues with the black community, those of you who are, who are fault finding, those of y'all who hate Donald Trump, you hate Barack Obama, you just, full, you just full of hate. I need you to realize and recognize and respond to the reality and the revelation that God was in Christ reconciling you unto himself. I need the believers to stand up and recognize that he did not count your sins against you. I can hang my hat right there. I'm done. The fact that he didn't count my sins against me. How can I hate my brother man? But he was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not counting our trespasses against us. And he has committed unto us. That word committed in the Latin expression of the word, it means entrusted. It implies a stewardship. A stewardship is one who is entrusted with responsibility and property of another. We have been entrusted with responsibility that belongs to God to bring reconciliation and healing. Will you manage that properly? Will you accept the stewardship of reconciliation? That means you got to quit scheming and conspiring in the break room against your white supervisor. That means you must accept the fact that white privilege exists and that for my white brothers and sisters who are listening, that you've been a benefactor of white privilege and have there, therefore been somewhat complicit in a spirit of white supremacy and have thereby been somewhat complicit because if you are not an anti-racist, well, Pastor Gentry, well, Johnny, I've known you since, well, I'm white, I ain't racist. Yeah, but if you ain't anti-racist, then you are part of the problem. I said that, and I love you with the love of God. To my black community, we must lock into our responsibility to heal. Black people, we always forgiven folk. My race, we, we, we're always loving and healing and forgiving. So no need to stop now. He's entrusted us the message of reconciliation. Will you accept it? I want to give you five principles of honor. I'm going to give them to you very quickly. Last week I talked about the absence of honor and how I felt that when you can look at how we can dishonor a black man by putting a knee on his neck until he stops breathing. When we can dishonor the black community by stereotyping, profiling, labeling, not listening to and hearing the heart cry 
of a Colin Kaepernick when we can blame shift and what 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 psychologists call uh, transference. It, it's getting the blame off of me. By changing the subject or the object to somebody else. That's what most Americans did when Colin, Ka Ka when Colin Kaepernick kneeled. They said he's disrespecting the flag. Get a clue. He took a knee to protest black police brutality against African-Americans, killings of unarmed black men and women, Sandra Bland and Mike Brown and all of them. And he took a knee as a peaceful, ain't that what y'all want? A peaceful protest against the pathology in our nation that black people are all too familiar with, all too terrified by, all too traumatized by. And so all of us need to look at, do I really honor my brother? Because if you honor me, you won't give me 30 years for crack while the white man gets probation and community service for powder cocaine. If you, okay, y'all don't like me today. If you honor me, you won't discriminate against me with a 650 credit score and decline my home mortgage loan. But when my white brother comes in with a 650 credit score, it's handshakes and howdy doody all day and approved based on friendships and relationships and the complexion for the connection. If we honor one another, we won't cry racism every time something happens to the black man and we want to make it a racial issue. If I honor my brother, I won't call him a racist because he disagrees with me. Okay, come on in here, black community. If I honor my brother, he can express his views and it may differ from mine and I have a listening ear rather than a condemning ear. Most of my white brothers I've been talking to, I've been talking to white pastors from mega churches in Houston over the last week. Many of them I respect and love dearly. And they said, we don't know what to say because we're afraid if we say the wrong thing, you're going to call us a racist. And if we say the wrong thing, our, our, our constituents, our white constituents are going to label us as well. We must honor one another. Can I give you the scripture? Somebody say honor, 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 honor. Romans chapter 12, verse 9. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Everybody type really love them, really love them. Re come on, type it in your comments. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with a genuine affection. Watch this. Take delight in honoring each other. I need, I need, I, I need, I need everybody cross-culturally, no matter what denomination, what religion, what color, what creed, I need you to ask God right now, Lord, help me to take delight in honoring others. I guarantee you, I, you, you listen, you'll begin to feel a healing. You'll begin to feel a lifting. You'll begin to feel a release happen in your heart when you ask God, help me to take delight in honoring others. First Peter 2 and 17, Peter writes to the Jews and he says, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. You know, the Jews had issues with Gentiles. The Jews uh, felt that the Gentiles should conform to their uh, cultural mediums and their cultural uh, uh, norms, rather, of circumcision, Judaic practices. And Peter had to remind them, come on, he had to remind them, honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. The apostle Paul even had to check Peter about some of his cultural stereotypes and traditions that he held on to that he tried to impose on others. 
And Paul had to confront him about his own racial prejudices. Hebrews 13 and 8, or 13 and 18, pray for us, our conscience is clear, and we want to live honorably in everything that we do. In everything we do, we want to live honorably. Somebody say five rewards for honor. Here's the first reward for honor. Romans 13 and 3, verse 4 as well. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. Are y'all listening? Anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. They will be punished for the authorities do not strike in fear I'm sorry, for the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right. In other words, when you're doing right, you shouldn't have to fear authority. We know that has been perverted and subverted in police brutality when a person can be doing right and still have to be in fear. But God's way is that the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. It's when you're doing wrong that you should really fear authority. Uh, would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right. I remember years ago when I was selling drugs and I, was, I had drugs in my car, you know, riding dirty, you know, trying to get me riding dirty. Y'all remember that, you know, I'm riding, riding. don't act like you ain't never rode dirty before. Uh, drugs in the car and, and police would, be at the intersection and, and, and I'd make a left turn and they make a left turn and I'd make a right turn and they make a right turn. And all of a sudden, I'm getting upset and agitated. I feel like I'm being harassed, but the truth of the matter was, I was in fear because I was not doing right. I don't have no witnesses here. The scripture says, do right and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants sent for your good. I'm praying that our nation comes into alignment with God's word where those in authority will realize the responsibility entrusted to them by God. That the authority is only there to administer pain and prosecution to those who are doing wrong, not to those who are doing Right. Police officers, law enforcement. Can you honor the God's God's word by honoring those of us who are doing good? Stop messing with folk who ain't doing nothing. Are y'all going to pray with me today? But also those of us, um, it says, would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Then do what is right. And, 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 and listen, God will honor you. The authorities are God's servants. They sit for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent for uh, uh, for the very purpose of punishing those who do wrong. So you must submit to them not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. The first reward of honor is honor frees you from the fear of condemnation. Honor frees you from the fear of condemnation. When I'm honoring my brothers and sisters and when I'm doing good, I don't have to worry about any condemnation coming on me. I shouldn't have to worry about that. I have a clear conscience, the scripture is teaching us, that, that literally that when I do what is right, I can expect honor back from authority. Are y'all with me? Honor frees you from the fear of condemnation. Here's the second reward of honor. Honor escapes the destruction of pride. How many of you know that when you dishonor people, you're operating in a spirit of pride? White pride, brown pride, black pride. First Timothy 6, 2 through 4, New Living Translation says this. All slaves should show full respect for their masters. Hold on, black man. I'm going to come help you right there, okay? See, that's why I, I don't follow Christianity, because it's a slave religion. 
And the Bible is, is, is conditioning black people to, to submit to white people. It's a slave religion. Let, let, let me help you. Let me bring you into revelation and truth. Slaves existed before there was a Bible. Slaves started in Portugal. Slavery was there in all different cultures. This is simply applying to a order. It's the principles that God wants you to get, not that we are to remain as slaves. It is the principles. Today's slaveholders could be likened unto your supervisor on your job. Y'all going to pray with me? Don't get caught up behind the cultural and social implications of the scripture and context and miss the spiritual revelation that God has for you. Are y'all with me today? All slaves should show full respect for their master so they will not bring shame on the name of God and his teaching. Watch this. And if the masters, if your supervisor, if the law enforcement officer, if your governor, if whomever, um, if they are, watch this, if they're believers, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. Okay? Those slaves should work all the harder because their efforts are helping other believers who are well loved. Watch this. It says this, teach these things, Timothy, and encourage everyone to obey them. Some people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people going to contradict the word of God, period. But these are wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Listen to me. And anyone who teaches something is something else or something different, watch this, is arrogant and lacks understanding. You can disagree with Johnny Gentry. You can't disagree with God's word. You can feel like, well, I'm a, if, they, if they bust on me, I'm a bust back. I feel you. I've been there. But this word of God is telling us that honor escapes the destruction of pride. That these teachings... They produce and promote a godly life. You want to live godly or you want to live fleshly? Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant. If you hold on to your own street justice, I feel you. I'm angry with you. But the word says, be careful about your pride. And it says this person who operates and teaches something different they're arrogant and they lack understanding. Honor escapes the destruction of pride. Here's a third reward for honor. Honor precipitates praise from your authorities. Precipitate is a $25 word for it, it, it rains down. Precipitation, rain. Honor precipitates praise from your authorities. When you honor people, when you honor authority, guess what? Your authority will rain down praise on you. First Peter chapter two, verse 13 and 14, New Living Translation. For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. Did y'all catch that? Submit to all human authority, whether kings as head of state or the officials he has appointed. Watch this. For the king has sent them to punish those who do wrong and to honor those who do right. Authorities are sent when things are in alignment with God's word and God's will. Authorities are sent to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right, to honor those who do right. I want to be in the praise and honor line when the authorities come down. Are y'all with me today? Oh I, oh, I can go blow for blow if you want to go blow for blow, but I've been there. I live that life. I can go eye for eye if you want to go eye for eye, but I've been there. I live that life. Oh, I, I can go toe to toe with you if you want to go toe to toe, and, and we can go, we can come from these shoulders if you want to. But some of you have lived that life and you realize that fighting in the flesh has, ha, has got you in trouble. In fact, the scripture says that the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. In this season of my life, I'm trying to produce 
the righteousness of the Lord. Honor precipitates praise from your authority. If you release honor, it's coming back to you. It don't say release the honor if they're honorable. It's coming back to you. It don't say release honor if they like you and embrace you because you're black. Just release the honor. It's coming back to you. Are y'all going to pray with me today? I'm running out of time. The fourth reward for honor. Honor determines the direction of your family. Would you believe it if I told you, Pastor G, you're pulling my coattail. Would you believe it if I told you that, that how you handle honoring your brothers, honoring your sister, honoring your neighbor, that it can determine the direction of your family? That when you dishonor others, it can, it can, it can, it can abort the legacy and blessings for your own family. First Samuel 2 and 27. I don't have time to read the whole thing, but it's a warning for Eli's family. Verse 30, I'll just start there. I'll back up to verse 29. So why do you scorn my sacrifices and offerings, Eli? Why do you give your sons more honor than you give me. For you and they have become fat from the best of my people, of the best offerings of my people, Israel. Watch this, verse 30. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I promise that your branch of the tribe of Levi would always be my priest. Listen, he's talking about lineage and legacy here. But I will honor those who honor me. God says, I will honor those who honor me. God, how do I honor you? You honor me by loving the Lord your God with all your soul, all your might, all your, all your mind, all your strength, and by loving your white neighbor, black neighbor, Pakistani neighbor, Muslim neighbor, LGBT neighbor, loving them as you love yourself. I will honor those who honor me. And watch this. I will despise those who think lightly of me. Kick God to the curb if you want to. He says, I'll despise you. The time is coming when I will put an end to your family. God said, you dishonor me. I'm going to put an end to your family. Some of our families in our community are living under a curse because we failed to honor God. I want every family right now, every head of household, whether you're a single mama, whether you're a father, whether, whether you're a grandmother, I want every household within the sound of my voice, as I'm, as I'm wrapping up this word, I want you to declare today that I choose to honor God with everything that is within me. I repent for dishonoring God. I repent right now for every area where I have rejected God, where I have dishonored my neighbor, my brother, my sister, where I've practiced prejudice, where I've practiced discrimination, i practice, come on, some form of bigotry. God, we repent right now before you. God, we want to honor you and we want to honor our brothers so that you don't cut off us and our families. We, God, we want our families to thrive. And God, we realize that maybe there is some dishonor released that has caused you to dishonor our family. He says, the time is coming when I will put an end to your family. All the members of your family will die before their time. None will reach old age. Can I bless you one more time? Honor determines the direction of your family. You will watch with envy as I pour out prosperity on the people of Israel, but no members of your family will ever live out their days. The few not cut off from serving at my altar will survive. Woo! The few that I don't cut off 
from serving at my altar, they will survive. They will live out their days. My last point, I need you to get these. Honor frees you from the fear of condemnation. Honor escapes the destruction of pride. Honor precipitates praise from authorities. Honor, honor determines the direction of your family. And lastly, I need you to know that honor brings you God's reward. Honor brings you God's reward. My time is up, but I want to refer your attention to Colossians 3, verse 18. Watch this. Wives, we're talking about honor here. Submit to your husbands as is fitting for those who belong to the Lord. Now, I don't want the husbands to get in the uproar right now and get yourself in trouble. There's more to the verse. All right, husbands? Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. My God. Any other husbands convicted right there? Verse 20, children, always obey your parents for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not aggravate your children or they will become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything that you do. Workers, employees, obey your supervisors. For they are watching everything you do. Serve them sincerely because of your reverence for the Lord. Because of your reverent fear for the Lord. Not because they're so scary or authoritative or powerful, but I serve and I submit out of reverence for God. Verse 23, work willingly at whatever you do as though you were willing or, or rather as though you were working for the Lord rather than people. Remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. As we honor our wives, <coughs> as we honor our husbands, children, as you honor your parents, citizens, as we honor authority, as we honor our brothers, remember that the Lord will give you an inheritance as your reward. If I had time, I would teach into inheritance, but just know this, just know that you have an inheritance because of your covenant in God. If you are a Christ follower and you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord of your life, you are an heir to the throne of God. There are some promises that are wrought to you because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you know that if you're an heir, if you have an inheritance, that means that when the one who is the subject of the will dies, your inheritance as re is released. I got good news for live stream land today. Jesus Christ hung, bled, and died on the cross so that every one of our sins would not be counted against us. Therefore, upon his death and burial and resurrection, it executed the covenant contract commitment of your inheritance. You have, uh, listen, you have access to all the riches, all the glory, all the joy, all the peace, all the power that belongs to our creator, God. If you're listening today and you've never made a decision for Jesus Christ. I want you to receive the reward for honor. I want you to make a decision today. Gentry, I'm willing to give it a try. I'm willing to give my life to the Lord Jesus on today. If that's you, make a decision today. And God and all the angels in heaven are, are, are literally rejoicing that you're having a turn. Maybe there's somebody who had bigotry or racism in your heart. And, and you need salvation, if that's you. Accept Jesus Christ 
as Lord of your life. Trust him today to begin a new journey. Or if you're here today and you just need to rededicate your walk to the Lord. Gentry, I, I strayed far away. And I want to come back if that's you. Rededication is in the air. It's in the atmosphere. He leaves the 99 to go see about you. Come on back to your walk with the Lord. Or maybe you want to connect with a spiritual community in a real way. Free Indeed Church is an amazing spiritual community. You can join online, be part of our virtual community. We'd love to know you and number you and, 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 and pour into you and serve you. Or you can join the physical church as we will be resuming gatherings on July 5th. However you want to become a part of the Free Indeed family, we'd be honored to have you. Make a decision. Let us know in the comments. Hit the link. Go to our website. Let us know what decision you made. And we'll be so glad to call you family. Let's remember to honor our brothers and sisters in the absence of honor. In the absence of honor, we'll see what we've seen in our nation. But when we understand the rewards for honor and the blessings for honor, we are a better husband, a better wife, a better son, a better daughter, a better brother, a better sister, a better employee. And God is going to bless us with the reward of, of our inheritance in Jesus Christ. I love you so much. Thank you for live streaming with us today. Thanks to all of our Freedom United worship team, our entire family. Thanks to our technical team led by Trey Cosmos, a.k.a. Well, it's Trey Cosmos, but his name is Tim Creeks. And thanks to Lawrence Creeks, our musician. Y'all just send up some love, um, some likes, some hearts. Our whole technical team, uh, Jayla Gentry, Aisha Lust, Ron Collins. Uh, I'm missing. I'm, I'm going to start missing folks. But y'all just show love for them. Just type the names if you if you know who they are and just show them love for all that they do to get the gospel out to the nations. Shout out to Kenya, um, Nairobi, Kenya, to Apostle Bernard, my spiritual son there at Free Indeed Churches of Kenya. We just love you all so much. We're so very proud of you. We're praying with you. We're praying for you. And we love each and every one of you. Um, thank you for partnering with Free Indeed. We love you to life. We'll see you soon. Live free.